Uh, ask this question around sort of food recovery and getting absolute certainty. Like, you know, if I had a peanut allergy and I knew that, you know, I should not pick peanuts up, how can I get absolute certainty? If I pick up another peanut, I'll explode into 100 pieces. So if the, like a doctor said that, how can I get that certainty? As an addict, as an addict, I'm insane. So often what doctors say isn't enough. Um, and or do I have to hit a rock bottom? Do I have to go into extreme agony and sort of like swell like a like a teddy bear because I can't stop eating the peanuts or something? It's a bit of a joke, but anyway. <laughs> so it's um, no, it's a serious question. You know, this, you know. I think one of the great things was, and I was definitely, um, you know, part of my story. I was definitely a food addict, and you know, when doctors said uh, it's part of my food story. You know, you've got kidney failure, avoid high potassium foods, and bananas was at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. As soon as they let me out of the hospital, I bought a big bag of bananas and ate them. Mm -hmm. and I was suicidal. Mm -hmm. You know, like doctors saying, don't eat bananas, you'll die. As soon as they let me out of the hospital, I bought a bag of bananas and ate them. I had a blood test and I had to have emergency treatment for, a, you know, I was about to have a heart attack. So I do get the question. I've been there. Mm -hmm. um, but I also had a spiritual experience, so that's lucky. I also, you know, immersed myself in Hawkins' work because um, it's actually a good question because when, you're, when your insanity is that strong that even if doctors say you'll die, even if you know you go crazy, but you can't, it's like the illness has so much momentum that it's like it has its life of its own. You can't even choose. It just is trying to kill you. It's like a, it's being caught up in a, like a magnetic field of death. And even doctors can say things, and even you know, it's like you've got a hammer in your head and you're sort of hitting yourself on the head. And like doctors saying, that's not a good thing to do. And you know it's not a good thing to do, and you can't stop yourself, you're still doing it. It's like this energy has, has grabbed you. This energy of, uh, of, uh, of anti-life, shall we say, has grabbed you, the suicidal thoughts. And there's, it seems like even you know it's insane, people are telling you it's insane, and you're still doing it. So I've been there. Now, the thing is, like, you've got to know that when you're in those lower, darker fields of consciousness, they are orchestrating your consciousness. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like when I'm in the levels of addiction and fear and shame, it's like I'm on a radio station or I'm on a frequency that is like I'm powerless to stop it. It's like that field of self-destruction it's like, if I stay in that field of self-destruction, uh, uh, you know, I'm sort of living in rave clubs and then going to buffet restaurants, it's like that field will dominate me. So the thing to know, what really helped me from Hawkins, is that I can't choose to stop killing myself. I haven't got the power to stop it. But I can do something very, very clever. I can immerse myself in fields which have very high vibration. Uh, and just live in those fields and what will happen is we'll, a crossover will start. Let's say I'm being dominated by suicidal thoughts uh, and addiction and that's my energy field and those are the vibrations I'm hanging around. Like I might be in, like a buff living in buffet restaurants where everyone's pigging out. You know, so I'm having thoughts, I want to pig out, I can't stop myself and then everyone's pigging out around me and it's like now, I can't choose to stop picking up, but what I knew is that different, different locations and different people have different levels of consciousness. So even though I'm now at a, at a level, I'm at a vibration in my personal vibration and the environmental vibrations I'm choosing, and I know that if I stay in my personal vibration and I stay in the vibrations which I'm surrounding myself with, death is certain. Death is absolutely certain. So I need to do this thing, and I got it from Hawkins. I go, I can't stop myself, I'm powerless. I need to immerse myself in the highest spiritual vibrations continuously until, and what will happen is, like, I'm at this low, dark vibration. I need to sit in places and hear people and have people mentor me who are of, of the highest light because I can't, I can't do it, but I, that light can rub off on me. And you're getting a crossover of vibrations. So let's say I'm at, 
I'm at the, I'm at the fear of, I'm at the fear self destruct vibration. But if I go and sit in meetings and locations with a very very high light, a very very uh, that are very very positive, then those and then I have a mentor or or uh, that that is helping me and guiding me, and I have and I'm surrounding myself in speaking to people of high light. Eventually what will happen is there'll be a crossover. My vibration will start to get the vibration of my mentor and the groups I attend. So it's not like I choose it, but I can, you know, having a mentor who's in the light, having groups to go. I, mean, I still live in groups, spiritual groups all the time, because like a park is going to have a neutral vibration. Like a, rec a rave club with gangster rap music going on and everyone taking drugs and drink is going to have a certain vibration. I, of course, the Miracles group is going to have a vibration. If I, have a, if I can speak to an enlightened teacher every now and then, or go and visit one in America every now and then, that's going to rub off. Those things are going to like, you know, like the darkness gets, you know, if you put a dark field in a, in a room full of light over and over again, it starts to vibrate with the light. But if, it's some, if someone's vibrating in darkness and they're in dark locations non-stop, speaking mm -hmm. to dark people, you know, they haven't got much chance. So once I got that, I need the light, but my vibration is dark. I'm hanging around dark vibrations and speaking to people in dark vibrations. So I can't do it, but I can at least choose someone of the light to be my guide. I can start to sit in the light, and I know eventually that vibration will be washed out of me. So it's like, if I just stay in my head and just watch horror movies and then live in buffet clubs and speak to my overeating buddies who just say let's go and eat together I'm not going to have much of a chance of getting out of that so my thing then was to expose myself to maximum light and hope it rubs off on me I don't know if that's a simple way of saying it mm -hmm. I'm in the dark my consciousness is dominated by dark thoughts and dark fields or demonic thoughts and I'm visiting and I have friends who are sort of dark and I'm going to locations which are dark but I there's a glimmer that wants the light so I'm going to let the people in the light and the groups in the light and the mentors in the light. I'm just going to pull myself out of my f typical friends, my typical places, and just, and Hawkins says, you know, these things, like certain music is of very high vibration, like Pachelbel's Canon, mm. Mozart. Twelve-step groups are the vibration of unconditional love. If I've got an enlightened teacher, that's at the level of enlightenment. Um, if I'm reading a book, of course, in Miracles or Hawkins' work or doing those things, those are a very high light. So immerse yourself in the highest vibrations non-stop to get the fastest current. Yep, okay. we're on camera. But it almost minutes. feels now yeah. like if you can imagine like a depth of the ocean, to use the same analogy you did, yeah. and me swimming upwards from 2012, it seems now that this is another layer, but demonic forces were yes. not were quiet somewhat before because I was still ingesting substances like like fake sugar perhaps in drinks that I didn't know whatever yeah. um, and, and and bread and stuff which was kind of sometimes I would want more sometimes I didn't so it's kind of like the almost demonic forces were quiet because we can still catch her if we don't catch her here we just catch her there yeah. so they swim alongside me but they're not that bothered about pulling me down yet because they know they've got me anyway because yeah, I'm still true. ingesting that yeah. So now, when this new clarity came after that weekend away, and everything's laid out, there's no more scrutiny around it, everything's laid out, it almost feels like that I'm closer to the light, even though I'm having these thoughts. And the more I swim upwards to the light, now they're like, well, now we need to pull her down, and really strongly down, because she's going to swim out to that light completely. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, the... the, the that's absolutely true. As soon as you aim for the light, but you know, my, my, my main thing is if you aim for the light, don't aim for the light to learn. Um, because you, the, the ferocity of the ego and, it, and, it, and it's cunning, as they say, cunning, baffling, and powerful. You know, if, you aim, if, you're, if you're gripped by the ego, uh, you want to aim for the light, but even having a moment of clarity for me wouldn't be enough. You, you've, got to like, you've got to have holy company. And, and it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like if there's, let's make it simple, if there's 24 hours in a day, 
every everything I'm listening to, who I'm speaking to, everything has a different vibration to it. So I want to maximize. Uh, I want to maximize the level of light support I get, you know, during the day. Um, and uh, have a seat. Uh, I want to maximize uh, the level of light support because it's like you've got to see. You've got to sort of see it because the ego is just waiting to grab you. So as soon as you're weak, the ego will pounce. So you go into a, a low vibration environment with some negative characters and you're feeling quite okay and they, they hook you in, then the ego's going to pounce on you there. It's got, a, it's got an entry, uh, an entry point. So if I've, like, if I've like spoken to my spiritual mentor in the morning, prayed, listened to Pachelbel's canon, gone to and taken toilet breaks to pray and speak to spiritual fellows, uh, have meditated re regularly throughout the day. If I'm doing all of those activities, the capacity, you know, when, you know, like the, the illness is waiting for a chink, you know, and the ego, you've got to understand, even though I'm talking dualistically as if the world is real, like there is, there is such a thing you could say as collective ego conspiring. You know, hence, you know, like when, uh, what was happening with Jesus, you know, when, obviously when you get to those high levels, it's like the collective ego, is, it sends the big guys after you, you know, like a little demon wouldn't be good enough for Jesus, you can send the big guys. So as you get into the light, but when you're vulnerable, you choose the light. So what, all your weaknesses will get, all, you know, the, the forces within your ego and within the collective ego will go for your weaknesses, they never go for your strengths. You know, if you take seven deadly sins, they're not like if, if you're not if donuts is not your thing, they're not going to test you with donuts. Mm -hmm. They're going to test you with something else. You know, if it's money or if it's uh, lust or whatever it is. So it's like those things, those things will will come. But if you immerse yourself in the light uh, and with light people and light groups, but there will also be protection. You know, there'll be. Like in a spiritual group, you know, even though this is dualistic, there will be angels around here. You know, it's hard for the demons. They can still come in, but it's hard for them to come in when there's so much light around. It's even but they can still come in. So if you're in a, like, uh, if you're in a, a gangster club, I'm not saying you would be, but, uh, you know, there is more chance for, the, for them to get, grab you in there than in other places. So it's this thing of, like, you haven't got it, but let it rub off on you. But also be wary if you're, if you make an aha moment, you've also got to stack things in your favor going forward. Like every day, every person I speak to, every place I go, every group I, I'm with, who are, who, who are my friends, what music am I listening to? Um, what, what spiritual texts am I reading? You know, everything, everything counts because if I can make it more simplistic, it's like if my, e if my ego is strong, I might need to do like 70 units of spiritual work to give myself a chance that my ego doesn't pull me down today. You know, in the early days I might have to get some, what does that mean? It might be I listen to some music, speak to a spiritual fellow, go to a spiritual group. And that means the balance of light is sufficient to keep my darkness at bay for today. Once, you, once your personal consciousness is in the light, you don't need to do that much because you're... But in the beginning, the darkness is quite strong. So you need to, like, aid that because you haven't got it in you. So you need to, like, imbibe it, you see. It, like, everything has a vibration. So if your vibration is very low, you have to live off the vibrations of people, places and situations which have a high vibration. Um, you know, if it's like, I'm not sure whether I'm going to eat a donut today or not, then I need more, I need more high vibe uh, environments. Once you get it high into the light, there comes a clarity like, you, I will not eat a donut today, it's gone. Mm. But there's a certain point where you're, fr you're fragile, and therefore you, you haven't got it in you, therefore I would, I would, um, it was what I, it's what I did, for, I'm still doing it. It's like, even if you're very advanced spiritually, even if you're advanced spiritually, would you rather sit in, you know, in churches and cathedrals and spiritual groups while you're doing advanced spiritual work, or would you rather sit? Uh, uh, <coughs> I shouldn't. I mean, like sit in a, I don't know what kind of thing. I don't know, like in a, what could be low? 
Uh, anyway, we'll just use gangster rap music, rave party. <coughs> uh, so, so it's like, it's going to be high, easier for me to go to very high vibrations when I'm in a reasonably high vibration. And it's like, and I know that uh, every vibe, you know, places, spiritual groups, cathedrals, where there's been lots of prayer, places of worship, they have an energy to them, you know, which is probably better than me sitting in a pub, you know, doing stuff. So let the, st let the, the vibrations of people and situations, like, aid you. Uh, that, that's the thing I do. So, is that an answer? Yeah. Okay.